Aldoja. We have quite a few viewers tuning in right now. Uh, welcome to the stream, Yano81. But right now, the Beastmaster first pick coming out of Fluff and Stuff. It's a pretty solid pick. It's pretty obvious um, why he goes for the the vision is just so absolutely ridiculous getting that much flying vision being able to have two hawks over at once and despite the few nerfs that did come out for the beast monster in the recent patches he's definitely still a tier one pick the faces what and the rikimaru being the bands coming out from fluff and stuff nothing too surprising their faces one of the better heroes to be able to pick up in your second pick simply by virtue of i'm guessing this is a shadow demon terror blade by the way but um faces void just by virtue of being able to combo very well with the couple of with some particular supports things like the phoenix things like um the waste art or so you can e easily get that one two combination early on but speaking of one two combinations to get early on the shadow demon terror blade coming out now this has some big pros this has some big cons the pros are that the Shadow Demon is a great defensive support, it's great synergy with Terrorblade, and more importantly, the disruption illusions make just do absolutely ridiculous amounts of damage. Terrorblade with the metamorph form when he gets disruption illusions out as well. That's basically about eight illusions or so that are going to be hitting up on your base, are going to be hitting up on your tier ones and tier twos, and those are going to be some very dead towers very, very early on. Now, the negative side is that Terrorblade being picked up this early on forces you into a corner. You're revealing that you have one of these squishiest heroes in the game to burst damage. So I wouldn't be surprised if Fluff and Stuff just straight up picks a lion over here. It's one of the best counters to Terrorblade. He has ways of dealing with the illusions. He has ways of bursting down the Terrorblade. Some good stuns coming out as well so that he prevents of the... He, he can try and prevent the Sunder. And maybe the Dazzle will be banned out simply by virtue of how much... The Shadow Demon Dazzle is such a potent combination anywhere to be, to be able to roam with the, the heal bomb and everything that at this point it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest, especially because of the synergy of Shallow Grave and Sunder. But it ends up being a Sven instead after much deliberation. It seems like Fluff wants to be revealing his carry as well. And this is another one of those carries that can go drastic, that can go spectacularly or that can go absolutely catastroph catastrophically. Now, the issue is with the Beastmaster, with the Sven, that you can get tied out very easily. They, I think they should be banning out a Disruptor over here as well. I like the Tide Hunter ban, but the Disruptor ban should be coming through as well. If he's able to get that down, then... Mm, I don't know, man. If they're, if they're able to get the Disruptor ban as well, the Sven should be having a lot better of a time as the Timber Saw and the Winter Wyvern getting banned out. Um, Tide Hunters would be good against the Sven. There is the fact that Sven does go BKB and he does go BKB very, very early. I think these tissues have dust on them. That's how old they are, dude. It's just like killing me. My eyes are watering. My eyes are watering at this point. Yeah, so the, the x bag should be the Disruptor or failing that something. That is able to kite out this fan pretty well. Maybe even try to ban out the lion themselves. The radium might want to be picking up that lion since it does deal with this fan pretty well. So it is going to be the invoker ban though. Another one of those heroes who's just very good at kiting him out. I was thinking more of the lines of supports because there's just a, a few too many mid heroes that you could be banning out. Um, a pick that I see Mason going for a lot in North American Elite League and I think would be pretty decent here for Bulba right now. Not immediately, but maybe on the first, fourth pick would be the Viper. Would help the Terrorblade a lot with the early mechanism, being able to push up lanes, being able to win mid, being able to kite out the Sven as well as you will be able to do so. Definitely a good pick up over here. I would understand if they go for the line as well because it's a good um support against fen it's decent against beastmaster in terms of it does very well in lane but beastmaster will probably just end up having to go into the jungle anyway maybe not now that bug tender has been picked but a line would have been a pretty good pick especially because there is a setup for the earth spike as well early on with the disrupt and whatnot so you should not be missing that at all with the damage coming out from the terror blade as well uh, definitely makes a lot of sense. Oracle being the pick coming for, from the dire side. It's good pairing with the Sven. The additional few seconds that the Sven can live because of the false promise is 
are basically all that he needs to be able to get off a lot of damage, get off the satanic and come late game, get off a lot of heals as well, and come back into the team fight practically at full HP. Five seconds. The Radiant Sign they need to be careful with this Oracle pick, so they need to be drafting something that can deal with it, but at the same time, maybe, I think, maybe not think too much on the lines of whatever that Oracle is going to be offering, maybe think more on the lines of just continuing to counter the Beast Monster from this fan for now and continuing to play your own game as well. You don't want to be thinking too reactively when you're in the drafting phase and that does always leave, lead to your downfall, I feel like, as they do go for the Axe. Good against this fan, decent against the Beast Monster in the laning phase because Beast Monster probably not going to be able to get a kill onto him with that roar unless there are zero TP reactions. And with a Shadow Demon on the Radiant side, Shadow Demon should always have a TP. So the only way that Axe goes down is if... Actually, Axe and Shadow Demon together are pretty good too because Axe's illusions uh, do spin. So if you throw the Shadow Demon Axe illusions onto a cramp level 1, it, they should be able to do a little bit of damage and then Axe can move in and try and finish those off. With his own spins, of course. Otherwise, Shadow Demon would be picking up those lost. It's the Earth Spirit pickup coming through. I kind of like this. I'm on. I'm on the fence about this Earth Spirit pickup. They have two supports which are very level dependent and which don't have the best of lockdown. They're the Earth Spirit very reliant on hitting those skill shots and making sure that they don't get dodged. But if they have a good Earth Spirit player, then I can understand why they're going for this. Five seconds. But barring that, um. This is definitely not an obvious pick coming out from them, and I think Fluff and stuff might be feeling the pressure of the very little amount of reserve time that he does have left. Only 17 seconds on that clock as the Zeus gets banned out. I don't particularly like that ban. It's good against a Terror Blade, I suppose, but you can very easily lean to destroy a Zeus, and you... Well, it's good against Bad Tientra, I guess. But if Shadow Demon rotates in with the Soul Catcher, then Zeus shouldn't really have a standard chance, assuming they have even the slightest of an aggressive hero for their mid lane. I still think the Viper would be a great pickup for them, and Fluff and stuff might actually end up banning that out. He's only got three seconds left on that reserve time. He needs to decide very, very soon. Might actually end up not banning anything. It will be the Viper ban that does come through, so I think it's a good ban from Fluff. It's a bit of an obvious ban out. Now, the question is, what do Radiant go for now in that mid lane position? And the Dragonite was what I was thinking of at first because it's decent against the Sven, it's very, very tanky, it's good against Beastmaster by virtue of being tanky, but it gets kited out very easily by the Beastmaster Hawks and the Earth Spirit and to some extent the Oracle as well. He needs a BKB very badly and neither the Bat Rider has come through as well. A Dragonite wouldn't be that great over here. Especially since it's probably going to be a Bat Rider in the mid lane and we all know how easily Batrider deals with any sort of melee presence in that mid lane. Of course, it could be a Beastmaster mid, so you never really know. Bulba, though, I doubt be that Dragonite is his style, and it really is up to him what he wants to be playing up in that mid lane. And There are a few of the stereotypical, stereotypically good mids left. Storm Spirit is decent, but Earth Spirit is very good against the Storm. You're very easily able to get a couple of silences off, and Storm needs to be very, very careful to have his positioning perfect all the time. The Roar and the and the Roar and the Bat Rider Lasso also being significant damage. What they could also do is send the Axe in the mid. No, no, that doesn't work. I was about to say pick a Slark, but I. I kind of forgot about the existence of the Terror Blade, which is a little hard to do considering that he is a bit of an absolute mammoth. Queen. Welcome to the stream, Verulia. <laughs> and now the Queen of Pain will be the end pickup. It's a traditional mid here, it's one of those heroes that have been out of the metagame for a while, and we'll have to wait and see how this ends up being laned out by the dire side. I'm interested to see whether this will be a bat rider or a beast monster in that mid lane. Beast monster should of course be absolutely destroyed by the Queen of Pain. So Bat Rider should be the one heading down towards that mid lane. However, Queen of Pain has fallen out of the metagame for a good reason. And the question is how well will they be able to kite the Sven using the Shadow Dagger, which is I think the real reason why Bulba has picked the squap is for her dagger and her ability to slow down Axel considerably in team fights and make sure that he's not really able to get too much done. I would have even liked a disruptor mid to 
be honest with the amount a disruptor mid does do quite a bit with the amount of farm that he can accrue with the amount of new items that he has for him the agonims the four stuff basically all these items just do so much on a disruptor even the veil of discard does add to his damage output quite a bit and now the agonims it is all the more viable for a mid main position but unfortunately with the earth spirit probably going to be roaming in on him a disruptor mid would be something that would go down very very easily if he's not perfect in his positioning that being said though disruptor might have not occurred to them as a mid lane hero either it's not really something that a lot of people even think about when you're thinking of mid heroes and as a drafter i have experienced that quite a bit where you don't even think about an option because you're not used to thinking about it Top lane though, Garter heading out over there with Ryu. Maybe they're looking to go for a bit of a dodge and they might think that this is an aggressive dual lane or an aggressive trial lane coming out with the Bat Rider in it. It's a bit, it's very unlikely. Of, of course, I do, I throw that disclaimer out there, but maybe they're just going over towards the dire side jungle, Garter. Actually, that's quite a bit of HP, 500, not too bad. Considering that you do have the 12 armor somehow. No agility items on him either. Has 12 armor level 1. This here is ridiculous. But that armor won't really be helping him against the magic damage of the dire side. The firefly in particular. Uh, I scratched the floor with my nail accidentally. And I've got those shivers running down my spine. And that really feels uncomfortable. The horn blows though, and this game hopefully won't. Because Fluff and Stuff are going to be moving in, securing the rune for Ryu, Boris. And we'll move into introductions quickly. So we've got Bulba on that axe, probably going, making his way towards that bot lane to lane up against the Beastmaster. They've got a bit of an aggressive trial lane going on, aggressive dual lane rather, with the Bounty Hunter being more of a roaming than an actual laner. And the people heading up on that aggressive lane will be Bats on the Shadow Demon, the Ryu, not Ryu Boris, just Ryu on the Bounty Hunter, terribly being picked up by Garter. And finally, in the mid lane, we have Saint Seiya returns going up against Ryu Boris on the Bat Rider dire side. The Earth Spirit picked up by Fluff and Stuff himself. Sven being played up by Axel. Uh, I've never really seen Axel play too much. RWB on Oracle. And finally, Beastmaster Squeal going into the offlane, going up against the Axe. But right now, top lanes where the action's at. RWO gonna be slowed up significantly so taking quite a bit of damage doesn't have the purifying flames to heal himself up just quite yet and bats making sure that they're getting their denies they're making sure that they're starving out the dark side for experience and fluff and stuff as well a bit star from for experience himself only level one no experience so far even picking up the items from the courier despite the bounty hunter having revealed himself on that top lane just a few seconds ago they just don't want to be risking anything at all and at this point it just seems second nature to them to have to go and pick up the items themselves to try and deliver it out the pull camp has been blocked out by a very typical ward placement also the other pull camp being blocked out surprisingly enough bad so this will be a sentry ward that will be dewarded very very soon ryu We'll be able to turn invis, but the dust comes through. Fluff and stuff did have that on his person. First blood goes the way of Axel. That's the, exactly the hero they wanted to be getting that, but and now it will be traded out. Bats, though, should end up dying for the Oracle's life. Two for one going the way of the dire side. Very, very quick respawns, though, and Bounty Hunter now TPing top lane. Ryu, only level one, though, and when he hits that level two, that's where he could maybe look to gank out on that mid lane. But Saint Seiya returns without a single sentry ward on herself, will not be able to get the D ward onto that sentry put down by Ryu Boros. But Ryu Boros may be looking to go for a bit of a kill over here, but Saint Seiya is able to be stay safe if she was facing forward that i think ryu bros might have actually gone for that with four napalm stacks up and the amount of turn speed slow that the battle rider napalm does provide to you it's absolutely ridiculous and now saint say being forced to turn tail and run dd on the bat rider ryu more than happy with being the recipient of that well bot lane squeal once again not that much money on him 
only sitting at three last hits. Balba actually taking quite a few. Oh my goodness, Queen of Pain gets a solo kill in the mid lane. Balba taking quite a bit of damage and Queen of Pain, I'm very surprised by that actually. But now top lane, that's where the actions add. Bats getting fortunes ended up, but gets a disruption out and now Fluff and stuff going forward a bit too aggressively. Did not use the roll, did not use a boulder for that. So he's very lucky in that regards. Doesn't have the stun to cancel the TP. Axel throws it out, wastes a little bit of mana, but. The TP comes through in time and Garter with the body box. The illusion doing the damage onto Axel and now with the slow coming through from the battle as well. The reflection comes out and Axel should end up going down, but the fortunes end being casted out by Art of VO. And the dust comes through our Ryu. Gotta be careful, he's gonna end up dying once again and maybe Garter gets caught up in it as well. But no, hold that thought, fluff and stuff. He's the one who's in trouble. Uses the fairy fire and Ryu turns out for a couple of right clicks. But Oracle will be able to pick that up as the stream crash. Uh, I'm sorry guys, the stream did crash for some odd reason, I have no idea why. I think a bit of a Twitch server side issue. But now we are back online, the stream crashed, and I'm sorry to all of you who are watching. Axel, gonna be slowed up again, the reflection coming through, The they're trying to get the body block out, but now with the Warcry being used and with the fortunes and a great cost from RWO getting a, pretty much four people caught up in that. If he'd waited a little while longer, this fan could have been even more secure in this position. What is that insect? That is a flying insect and that probably is a biter. And I don't have my fan on. And I missed the kill because of an insect. At least I got it on camera. This is frustrating. I've missed two kills so far in the mid lane, but Saint Seiya returns using all of her spells, just basically outplaying the bat rider just a little bit over there. Despite the sticky napalm charges going out onto her, she is able to get that kill now. Fluff and stuff gonna be slowed up by Ryu. Needs to be careful, but gets the kick away onto Ryu and is able to bowler roll himself out to safety. More than happy with that. Now the other Ryu, he's the one who's in mid lane trying to get us some revenge frags. Revenge kills, sorry, you've been playing too much CS, but revenge kills onto the Queen of Fame, but no such luck just quite yet. All the action has been on this top lane for the dark side so far. And Ryu, gotta be careful that he doesn't become a, a big part of that very action. Queen of Fame blinking her way down towards the bot rune. Does scout out the Hawk, but won't be able to get the necessary right clicks to try and get that farmed out. Ryu, though, has a massive level deficit. He's actually just sitting at level 5. Queen of Pain has somehow managed to win this lane so handily that Ryu is... Not even level 6 when she's halfway through that level 7 mark. And now with Ryu scouting out the double damage when picks that up, will end up going down. It's going to be a little bit of recovery for Ryu, but Ryu, there is Ryu on Ryu action. This is frustrating. But Ryu, Dota, he's the one who only gets about 30 experience from that bounty kill. He was only level 2, of course. Now Garter, top lane. Level 6 soon for him as well. Doing pretty... Well, for himself, sitting third highest in the farm charts. Of course, the farm charts being dominated by Bulba. 50 for 3 lost hits wise. The Beastmaster nowhere near as fortunate. The offlaners, the traditional offlaners, of course, it's a world of a difference. Level 8 versus level 7. But mid lane, that's where the real action is going on. Ryu gets slowed up by the dagger. Should end up falling to that anyway. But the disruption comes out. Saint Seiya may be able to get the kill under Fluff and stuff as well. Fluff and stuff backing himself off. Ryu will be able to live to fight another day. He's just had the stick charges ready regardless so probably would have lived even if it was one more tick saint seiya blinking himself forward though and despite Ryu not going down he still get manages to get himself a kill three for zero despite a disadvantaged lane matchup he's more than happy with how this is going for him so far no mana on rwo will be a, a double kill going for saint seiya's i don't know who this guy is but he's definitely very very good welcome to the stream fnt <laughs> Garter now on this bot lane, treads on route, Bulba calls him downstairs to go knocking on that tower and that knocking is hard. Just like Bulba at the thought of that much money, now Squeal, he's the one who's gonna be pursued up with the battle hunger on him, maybe just looks to deny his own boar. Try and get that one off, but top lane, Axel. 
Gets one little pink out onto Ryu, but Ryu, invisibility activated. Might just go for a turnaround. The Shadow Demon keeping his way up towards the top lane as well. Axel getting a little bit scared, but the aggressive positioning as well. The Shadow Demon Soul Catcher goes out, and now with the Axe Fall coming through, and the amount of creeps that there are over here, Axel will end up falling. A great coordination coming out from them. Axe's TP coming through at just the right time as well. Now, Seiya with a Haste Rune. Gotta be careful. Bad Rider will end up going down. He gets the second Scream of Pain, and now with the Stick Charge is used up, he might even look to re engage onto this man. Fluff and stuff will end up going down, but no, actually, somehow that boulder did not connect. And Seiya feeling very, very confident in his ability to survive, but did not have the mana to pursue any further. And without the bottle charges, but any stick charges, I had no way of recovering that, that very mana. And now Bulba, he's just camping his way on this top lane. Vanguard at the ready with the amount of farm that he did get from the safe lane. He's able to give it up to Garter, feeling more than safe with what he has so far. But Axel wants to take some of that safety away. He's cutting through the trees. He's asking for backup. Ryu has arrived and now Axe to the call going through. Lasso up. He will be dragged into... Wait, hold that thought. Disruption comes out. He won't really be dragged into tower range just quite yet. Should be able to live because of that. Bats won't be as lucky. Queen of Pain has arrived over here as well in the back lines doing a lot of damage. Sonic Wave goes out onto three people. Ryu Dora should be the one who ends up falling despite that TP over here. He's at an absolutely atrocious time. Maybe even getting Axel and Axel goes down. Bulba gets the battle hunger onto Ryu. That should be enough to kill it. One more right click is all it takes in Queen of Pain unstoppable streak so far and this will be a double kill she blinks forward kills left right and center this man 2100 gold on him he's just sitting on top of the net worth chart despite bulba's very impressive start he just has no comparison with the queen of pain who has 40 lawsuits and seven kills to his name and not to mention a couple of towers going down as well giving him a little bit more gold garter trying to make that a little bit gold a lot more gold as Axel TPs his way towards that bot lane, decides that he wants to go back to laning against the big bad boy himself, laning against the Terrorblade, while his top lane tier 1 is going to be creep skipped on, is going to be bashed on by the creeps, is going to be chipped down, slowly down, whittled to low HP. Saint Seiya though, got to be careful, has quite a few sticky napalm charges on him and the smoke gank is coming through from the dire side. Wheel, no blink dagger or anything of the sort, I believe it is going to be the Necrobook. Components for Chase just needs the recipe right now for the Necrobook level 1. And Ryu almost getting the kill over there. Garter is the one who's being chased up though. And Squeal gets a roar out. Hot. Scouting out, making sure no one's over here to provide backup and Oracle getting kill onto the terrible with the help of the purifying flames and terribly without his sunder being available to him will end up taking a fall not able to get that off otherwise sort of maybe even the queen of pain blinking in with another few screams of pain would have been a completely different fight for him now tp down from the axe going on to axel Links forward, dodges at the stun. Axel ends up stunning a creep by accident and now doesn't even get that kill. So will be battle hungered up. Bats over here in the back lines. Disrupts up squeal. Now ultimate comes out. Galtrith has been used, but the Sonic Wave doing so much damage. Axel's gonna end up taking a fall. So will RWO. One more right click from Terrible. It will do just that. And that's all she wrote. Three for one. Shadow Demon goes down, but with the amount of people who fell, with the amount, with the type of people who fell, it's not just the support of the offline. It's gonna be the mid one support and the carry a big swing going the way of the radiant side and already this graph looking catastrophic seven six and a half thousand gold and about the same for experience going the way of Bulba's team now saying say i gotta be careful dd rune and arcane rune on him though so maybe he's not the one who's being needs to be careful axel Keeping forward aggressively, but Saint Seiya just getting some damage out onto the tower. More than happy with that, but is able to scout out fluff and stuff while Axe gets a kill onto the Bad Rider. And without the Bad Rider, there's going to be no blink anytime soon. No initiation to try and get this massive streak on this Queen of Pain. 7 0 and 4. 
We've already talked about her impact on this game, but speaking of impact on this game, this Ward's impact might be the big turnaround for this game. The silence coming through. Bats will not be able to get out any spells. Maybe the disruption comes out onto him in the animation, gets cancelled up. No mana for Bulba, though, and now without the call being available to him, Saint Seiya is the one who's going to have to clean house. The stuff and stuff gets tracked up. Ryu getting his team a lot of gold as well. RWO trying to get that kill now. Balba getting caught mid call, dominating spree goes the way of Sven. That's a good kill for them to get two for two so far, despite the great initiation from Balba early on and the good follow up from Saint Seiya. Balba is able to get himself away to safety. No one's talking in Twitch chat for some reason. Man, I might end up taking and I, I actually for once I actually kind of hope that the games do pause a little bit in between so I can take a 20 minute nap. And once that happens we can go back to casting. I actually wasn't able to take a nap right now because I thought the game was starting. So I ended up just straight away loading up the stream, doing whatever I could and... Oof, am I regretting it or what? I don't think I'm going to last till 6am today guys. I'm already feeling the fatigue wearing in onto me i will get up a couple of games though and ryu dota almost goes down but seiya without the scream of pain being available to her just quite yet will not be able to get that kill still keeping up his farm i'm impressed with the amount of losses he has gotten in the past four minutes still accrued about 35 last hits in four minutes not too shabby not too shabby at all Especially considering his kill participation and now he's been trying to be all around the map so far participated in 13 of the 17 kills of the Radiant side, but Ryu, what are you going for buddy? You've used your Firefly already. This might be a bit preemptive, but Looks like Ryu is more than happy with going for absolutely nothing other than one creep wave while Bulba picks up that right click They're Going in onto him though. They don't have any catched and with that observer ward already plopped down in the middle lane Bulba knows exactly what's happening he's baiting them out pings are coming on blink in from axe they're gonna get the kill onto oracle immediately and without the oracle ultimate squeals only reliant on his board to try and keep him alive but squeal being purged up by bats will end up taking a fall and now ball by getting a call into fluff and stuff as well fluff and stuff getting tracked up that's a lot of gold that's going to be going their way if they're able to get this fluff and stuff trying to get that roll but ends up being cancelled by the bounty hunter shuriken toss of all things would have gone to bubble regardless bubbles making sure that the roll wouldn't be able to go over the high ground off the radiant side Dude, are you kidding me? I did that yesterday. I went to sleep for 20 minutes and I woke up and I was completely fresh. I find that really easy to do. I just need to set an alarm. That's all that matters. Hell, I don't even need to go to sleep. I just need to lie down for 5-10 minutes and then that's enough for me. But now Soulcatcher going out of the Ryu. That's 5 no napalm charges on him. Ryu might end up- Oh my god, that was a miscommunication if I've ever seen it. Ends up not mattering and ends up being a four-man track kill. Bounty under level eight, not at that level two track just quite yet, but the gold still pretty significant, about 600 going the way of the Radiant side for such an inconsequential kill. A bad rider who does not even have his blink dagger up just quite yet. 3,800 net worth, 16 minutes in, bad rider, fluff and stuff. Not fluff and stuff, sorry, Ryu Boris having been completely outlaid by Saint Seiya. And I think I do have some people in chat who don't like Ryu Boros very, very much. Are you saying that is so stupid to my sleeping capabilities or to Ryu Boris's play? Because I could see you doing both. I know you really don't like Ryu Boris. The Earth Spirit, though, he needs to like Ryu Boris mostly because they end up doing a lot of events together. Also because they're in the same team, and so far Ryu Boris isn't really giving him very much to like. After losing his lane like he did, I've really got to say the Queen of Pain snowballing this hard. Owed in no, in no small part to Batfighter's performance in that mid lane. Stupid to sleep in cap capability. Alright. Well, 
I mean, I can, I'm can. i honestly just going to go lie down for five minutes. I'm going to get into the next lobby. I'm going to lie down for five minutes. I'm, I'm going to be a-okay. Well, not okay, but I do need... Like, I'm going to be way better. Of course, having more people watching also helps. That's a big motivator for me to stay awake. But now, track going out. The blink call into onto Ryu as well. The blade mill having been activated. A bit of an overkill with the ultimate being used. But has the acronyms. 40 second cooldown. Doesn't really care. Ain't the slightest. God likes free on him. At this point, Seiya is just styling on the bad rider. Armlet and blink dagger onto Axel. Just some good cheap items. I think he's going to be going for the Echo Saber next. I need... Ah... Uh... <laughs> I don't know man, I don't know what's wrong with my nose today. My resistances just aren't what they are normally and now looks like we're gonna have the resistances of the dire side tested while these tier 3 towers in that mid lane are being laid to siege. RWO gonna be blank called upon him with the blade mill and the spins. They're gonna be going down immediately with the frame losses coming through as well. Now ultimate coming out of the shadow demon. Fluff and stuff gets slowed up by that. Ryu gets the lasso onto Garter, but will they be able to get any kills so far? The fight doesn't look all too bad if they're able to get a kill onto Garter, but no Garter turns it around, gets the thunder off. Now four stars coming through as well. Bulba just making sure that they're able to get absolutely nothing. There were a lot of people who went very very low, but unfortunately, only kills to be had were by the Radiant side and now. Speed of Pain threatening to throw out that ultimate as well. Shadow Demon Illusion of the Terror Blade goes out and they're gonna be dashing up onto that tier 3 tower. Now Bulba blinking forward, getting a blind call onto Squeal. Squeal gets false promised up, should end up going down regardless of track going out. Ryu will take a fall, but no Ryu even forced off over outside of True Sight range will be taken out by the Oracle. So it wasn't actually a blind call, I'm sorry, it was with vision but still two for one trade this time and with a little bit of damage being dealt to the tower as well queen of fame with the bounty with the regeneration room might just look to go right back into this game the way she's playing with the amount of aggression she is exhibiting even throwing out the agonims ulti to make sure that her bounty room does not get cancelled and yeah he's in right over i have no idea what he's been doing so far in this game Welcome to the stream, Shitter. It's welcome. Good to have you back from yesterday. Now, Fluff and stuff, gotta be careful. Maybe he's setting up to try and go for a kill and he's asking Squeal to come by. Silence is up and ready if he chooses to go for that, but Squeal will not be able to close the distance, uses his smoke. Saints say he knows exactly what's up. He blinks himself into the trees to make sure that they're not able to scout him out. Also, partially because that might be a mistake and he has no idea what he's doing with his life in those trees. That's a bit of a marijuana reference, if you guys can get that. It wasn't meant to be, but it ends up being one, so it's okay. I said regen rune afterwards. A Saint Seiya. Ah. Bottling himself up, but uh, coming back from like, Axel GD. The Echo Saber on him, as I predicted. So blink forward from Bulba in the mid lane. The Ryu is the one that's caught out. The dunk comes through and Ryu once again. He's got nine deaths. It's 33.33% a, a of all deaths on his team. And probably considerably less contribution in terms of percentage contribution. Now, this is what I was talking about. These are the massive amounts of terrible illusions just coming out of onto these towers and look at how far they're going down and Bulba with the four staff forward blink in onto RWD doesn't even get the ulti doesn't need it Queen of Pain getting that kill magnetized going out Flop and stuff doing whatever he can but also ends up getting ends up falling a victim to the dunks of Bulba and GG is called they realize that there's absolutely nothing for them to do over there the game will end up ending the throne will fall and we're gonna move into another game very shortly ladies and gentlemen stay tuned if you've got any questions be sure to ask them of me in the meanwhile i think all of the people who are watching right now are followers so there's no real point asking you guys to follow 